Python can be really useful when it comes to plotting out either sets of data or even functions. Today I'm going to show you how to plot out a specific function in Python, and that function is the solution to the one-dimensional infinite square well. Now this is the functional representation of the solution, and I just want to give a little bit of an explanation as to what it means. So this is the solution to the Schrodinger equation for what's called the infinite square well potential. And what that corresponds to is you have a particle inside of a box, and the walls of the box are infinitely high. Now this wave function gives you all of the information about the state of the particle, and it's deeply related to the probability of finding a particle at a specific point inside the box. Now what this A is here is it's the width of the box, so this box is infinitely high, but it does have a width. We're going to go from 0 to A. What this root 2 over a corresponds to is it's the normalization constant. It says that if you were to add up all of the probabilities of finding a particle somewhere, that should add up to 1. That means that there is a 100% chance that the particle is somewhere in the box. The n here corresponds to the energy of the particle. So that means that the probability distribution uh, of the particle is different for different energies. Now there are tons and tons of videos online that show how to find the solution for the infinite square well potential, so I'm not going to be doing that here. Uh, personally, I like Brant Carlson's video, I think he does a great job showing how to find this answer, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now just to be thorough, I should say that the wave function itself does not tell you the probability of finding a particle somewhere, rather the wave function squared. But I just wanted to give a little explanation as to what the thing is that we're going to learn how to graph today. So with all that being said, let's learn how to plot this out. Alright, now we are ready to start plotting out what this function looks like. So I'm just going to, I like to always have a little, the little hashtag is commenting in uh, Python. So I have to just label it that this is for the infinite square well. First thing I always do whenever I code in Python is I import the libraries that I'm going to be using. And for this case, I'm going to be importing NumPy and Matplotlib. Whenever you write as, that just means whenever I want to use something from the NumPy or the Matplotlib library, I have to say NumPy or Matplotlib. Then you can say as PLT or as NP, which means that's all I'll have to type. So it's just making a little substitution. Uh, what NumPy does is it, is it lets me access the use of arrays, and it also lets me use things like different constants, like pi, and it also lets me use different functions like sine and cosine so that Python knows what I'm saying when I say sine. That way I don't have to use like some power series representation or something. Uh, I'm going to also define pi equal to numpy.py. That way I don't have to, just to minimize how much typing I have to do. And let's define the width of our infinite square well. We said that it was a, but we actually have to put a number in for it now. So let's just use uh, 2 pi. And I'm going to multiply this by 1.0. And that's because I know that I'm going to end up, uh, I forgot an equal sign. It's because I know that I'm going to end up dividing by A, and I don't want the computer to do any integer divisions type stuff. And we're going to be plotting the wave function over given X values. We need to, def we need to define what those X values are first. So we're going to create an array that I'm going to call XVALS. And let's go ahead and just let X go from 0 to 2 pi, so 0 to A. And then we have to specify how many points we want to evaluate the function at. Because the computer is not going to just, it doesn't know what continuous is. We have to specify how many points we're going to use. So let's use 10 for now. We're going to change it, but let's just say 10. And let's see what this looks like. Uh, print xvals. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us 10 x values from 0 to pi and they're going to equally be spaced out. So here we see 0 to 2 pi, 10 values. Each one is about 0 0.698 away from the previous one. So now that we know how that works, let's increase this to about 1,000. That way we get something that looks smooth, something that looks continuous. Okay. 
And now we're about ready to define our wave function. So define, let's just call it psi. And so the wave function depends on x, that's, that's right, but it also depends on the principal quantum number n because that wave function is going to look different depending on what energy level you're at. So we're going to have it depend on n and x. And let's just call it, I don't know, wf equals... Uh, one thing that we forgot, that I forgot to define is my normalization constant, so let's just call that a is equal to 2 over little a all to the one-half power. So that's square root of 2 over a. Wave function is equal to a times sine of x well not sine of x but sine of, okay, so our wave function is the normalization constant times sine of n pi x over a and then we're just going to return whatever this value is. Let's give ourselves a little bit of spacing. So this is where this isn't C++. Uh, this is where we're defining our function. I'm just going to comment this out so that you have a little bit of a reference. This is our normalization constant. These are the x values that we're going to be evaluating the function at. So we're evaluating wave function or psi at these x values. Okay. Well now we need to actually tell it, we need to tell the code to evaluate our function at those x values. We define the x values, we define the function, and I need to put them together. Okay, so we can call this, let's call it y vals 1, and we're going to create an array that just evaluates psi at those x values. So y vals 1 can just be psi at n x vals. Now what's going on behind the scenes here is that it's going to be looping through all of those x values. Um, it's not just going to be the first one. So something that we could have done is we could have created like an empty list and then looped through it ourselves. We could have said for i in x vals, uh, let's say y vals dot append psi of n comma i, which would take the ith entry in that array and evaluate the function to it and then add that to the list. It's a little cumbersome to do, but that's sort of like what's going on with uh, just saying y vals 1 equals n x vals. If we tried to run this code, we'd get an error because nowhere have we said what n is. Uh, so let's let y vals 1 be the y values associated with the wave function for the ground state, so n equals 1. And we can, uh, just so that we have some different things to look at, let's go ahead and make sure that we want to plot out why not the second energy level and the third. And we'll stop at 3. <laughs> Now everything, if we were to run the code, it would run, but nothing would really happen. So we can run it and just see that it's going to complete, but we're not telling it to do anything with this information. So the, the, the code is evaluating psi at all those x values for three different n, and then we're just, the code exits, we're not doing anything. But now we want to plot out what that result is. And then we, we do that as we use the pre-built plot function in... Uh, plt.plot plow um, and we just have to give it the parameters now plt.plot so we want to plot x values and y vals 1 and we want to do this for the other ones too so you can put multiple plots on top of each other let's just see what this one looks like though plt.show so in order to get the graph to actually show up you have to remember the plt.show Let's see what this looks like. It's going to look really boring. Yep. Great. So this is just the first, this is the ground state wave function for the particle in a box. 
Kind of cool. I mean, uh, it's a boring graph because we have added absolutely nothing to it. It's just a curve on the graph. Let's see what we can do to make this a little prettier. First thing is we should add the other ones to it. So this is going to be y values 2 and y values 3. And what this is doing is it's plotting uh, the first energy state, the second, and the third all against the same x values. So now we can run this one. It'll still be a pretty boring graph, but now we at least have all of the information on there. So some things that we can do right off the bat. We don't have a title. We don't have uh, axes, titles. We could throw in some grid lines. Let's, let's start making this look prettier. So in order to add a title, it's, it's really, really, it's really easy to do. It's plt.title. And then you enter whatever you want the title of your graph to be. So let's just call this wave function waft. Okay, wave function for inf square well. Okay. Uh, let's add axes titles. Plt dot uh, x label is how you get a title for your x axis. And let's just call these x values. And the same thing for uh, the y-axis is plt.ylabel. What's cool about Python, about using matplotlib, is that it recognizes uh, LaTeX writing. So what you can do is you, if you want to use like a Greek letter, you do it the exact same way as if you were entering an equation in LaTeX where you use a dollar sign, backslash, and then the Greek letter. So we can write psi. Okay, and then end that. X. If we were to use a capital P inside, it would just give you the uppercase version of the letter. Um, let's also throw in some grid lines, plt.grid, and we don't have to put anything in there. And right away, it should look a lot better. So you can see we got the Greek letter psi of X, we've got X values in the bottom, wave function at the top, we've got grid lines. One thing that this is missing, though, is I don't. It doesn't tell me what I'm looking at. So yes, this is the wave function, but what do the what are the different graphs mean? So it'd be nice if we could put in a legend that says this is for n equals one, this is for n equals two, etc. So let's do that. The way that we do that is we go back to the plt.plot functions, and what we can do is we can label it. Label equals quotes n equals one. We can do that for the other ones. Now, if we were to run this, we would probably get an error because what we need to do is we need to create the legend, plt.legend. Okay, now let's see what this looks like. awesome so now we have our graph we've got the grid lines everything looks okay we've got something that says blue line corresponds to n equals one and so on but orange is a stupid color objectively <laughs> uh, so let, let's learn how to change the colors of the different lines that we're using and we might as well also play around with changing the type of line Remember, we're not using, it's not a continuous function that our sign is continuous, but we're not passing a continuum of x values to it. They're all discrete. So it's kind of misleading that it's giving us a uh, continuous looking graph. And you could say, well, Andrew, you're using a thousand points over two pi. Uh, yeah, you're right. That, so that would bunch the points up together. But if you zoom in on it, it's still continuous, so it's interpolating it with a line in between each point. So if we were to, say, use 100 points, um, it might be, actually, let's go back to 10. Let's use 10 points and graph this out. It's going to look very crude. You can see that it's connecting each point with a straight line. But what if I just wanted to see the actual points? What if I don't want it interpolating it? 
you can change the line style and, uh, by using the third entry in the plt.plot. So you have your x values, your y values, then you can change the color of the, of the line that you're using as well as the type of line that you're using. So if I wanted to do blue dashed lines, you would type in B and then a double dash or double hyphen. And that's going to give me dashed lines across the board. One thing to keep in mind though is that the number of dashes is not equal to the number of evaluations. If you want to see every single point, you can do something like say red, which is R, uh, and you can do an O. So an O is going to give you a really big dot for each point. And just to be thorough and give you another example, we could use a smaller dot and that's just going to be, let's make it black. So for some reason in Python, K is black. So we'll use K and then we're going to use a period. So what this, go what this is going to show us is it's going to give us blue dashed lines for n equals 1. It's going to give us a bunch of uh, red dots for n equals 2. And it's going to give us a bunch of smaller black dots for n equals 3. I forgot my comma. Great. Let's also increase the number of points because that looks like nothing. So let's go back to, let's see, if, let's do, yeah, let's do 100. Now it looks like something. Okay. But that's not a realistic thing that you would really want to look at if you were showing this to someone or if you were putting this in a paper. Typically, you want it all to be the same line style. So say we still want to just use a solid line. So let's, let's make these all be solid lines again. Let's make this one blue, though. Let's still make this one red and make this one black. Okay. Make sure that this runs. Okay, so we got a black, red, and a blue line. So that's nice. It's nice, but what if I said, I think that the ground state is just much more important than the two excited states. I want that to be apparent in my graph. You can actually change the width of the lines in order to make certain ones pop more than others. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's, let's say we want the blue one to pop more than the red and the black one. What we can do is it's still all done in the plot function and we can say line width and you can specify how thick you want the line. I'm not sure what the default setting is for how thick it is but let's just put 2 for this one and then we'll use 0.7 for the others. Okay, let's look at this now. Cool, so that makes it much more apparent that the other data is there if you want to look at it. The blue one is more important to me, and I think that comes across in this graph. Okay. Now, there are tons and tons of more things that you could do with Matplotlib or different uh, graphing libraries in Python, for example, there are certain ones that would help you animate this if you wanted to. Um, but this was just supposed to be a broad introduction to how to do some of the cool things in the plotting libraries in Python. Uh, all this stuff could have been done in something like Mathematica, but it's still useful to know if in, a, in an actual programming language how to plot things out. Uh, so I hope you guys found this useful and a little bit helpful. Let me know in the comment section if you did. I'll see you guys there.